This is the ASUS Tough Gaming Laptop F15, and its price point, its specs, and the performance all encapsulated is a really good value if you can find it at the right sale. I got to test out this laptop, and I've thoroughly enjoyed every single moment of it, and we're going to be going over the details of this today, especially since I just came off a review fresh of the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. I have some comparative data to go through on a laptop that's in a similar price point with a similar spec sheet. And I can say that this one can handedly beat it out. However, you do have to keep in mind what the price is right now and what the sale price will be when you might consider picking it up. And we'll have affiliate links in the video description in case you are thinking about picking this thing up. But looking at the specs, what we have in this version of the F15, because there are multiple different iterations, is the i5-11400H version that also has eight gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM. It has a 512 gig NVMe SSD, as well as an RTX 3050. But you also get a 1080p, 144 hertz adaptive sync display, which wrapped up into the total package. I actually bought this laptop myself for the price point of $599, which is the exact same price point that I got the IdeaPad Gaming 3 for. However, that sale has since ended and it's currently running for $799, so it's a little bit more expensive. But if you can find it at the right deal, this thing is incredible. Speaking of finding the right things at the right price point, in case you're not looking for a laptop but would rather build your own gaming PC, Let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video sponsor, some company that's never let me down, Silverstone, my friends. They have been on this channel from the beginning and they have a new line of cases that you should check out, the Ferris series with a few updates that are gonna be good no matter what you're trying to build. So if you're looking for RGB, addressable RGB, you want a nice mid-tower chassis, they have the Ferris 512Z. In case you want something that's a little bit smaller but has extensive water cooling support, they got the Ferris 511Z. But in case you want a micro ATX chassis, they have the Farah 312Z that supports all of that. And they also have the Farah R1 Pro V2, which is stylish, has a distinct tempered glass for a great case with a fully meshed front panel as, as well as sufficient space for the high-end graphics cards. But let's say you want to just have your PC sit on your desk and not shout loud RGB noises. Silverstone's got you covered with that too. The Farah 513, a high airflow ATX chassis that's gonna do everything in style without shouting about RGB. The Farah 3 11 micro ATX doing something very similar and the Fair R1 V2 doing that with tempered glass as well including a vertical mount GPU slot you can have a whole lot with Silverstone's new Fair line of cases and the pricing on it is super reasonable when they asked me to do the sponsor spot I was like hey that sounds great. And then I looked on the pricing at retail and I was like, that sounds even better. These are some good looking cases at an affordable price point that can deliver a whole lot to your system. Whether you want bling or whether you just want subdued performance, Silverstone has that for you in their Farrah line of cases. Check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's video. So I mentioned the spec sheet on the Asus Tough Gaming F15, but it doesn't just come down to that because anybody can slap parts into a laptop. It also comes down to the build quality as well as the other features that the laptop tends to offer and this thing hits good in nearly every single mark besides one which we'll talk about in a second but the screen is actually surprisingly bright and decent it doesn't get up to hdr levels of brightness but again at the price point 1080p 144 hertz games look smooth the response time is impressive it's got an anti-glare coating and has 62 percent of the srgb color space which is not great for professional reasons but will be sufficient for or a gaming laptop in case you're considering picking that up. Additionally, with the processor that's in here, the i5-11400H, it actually runs at the full 45 watt spec, whereas there's a reduced version that Intel also sells, but you get the full performance out of this one. As far as connectivity and IO, there's plenty to go around. You've got Wi-Fi AX and a two by two setup with Bluetooth 5.2. Then on the left-hand side, you've got power in, gigabit ethernet, HDMI 2.1, two USB-A ports at five gigabits per second, and a Thunderbolt 4 port, which helps to open up a lot of opportunities for this laptop right here, as well as a headset port all on that same side. On the other side, you only get one USB-A port, but you do have a ton of connectivity options between the two sides. Thunderbolt
control allows you to introduce docks as well as eGPUs, which this six core 12 thread 11400H will be able to handle some decent high speed graphics cards in case the RTX 3050 that's in here isn't good enough for you. But also the build quality on this thing is super solid. It weighs in at about five pounds, so it's definitely hefty, but it has a nice brushed metallic finish. It's got gorgeous copper heat pipes on the underside. It's thick, it's stable. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break under any sort of regular use. So transporting this to classes if you're in college should probably be fun. Also the keyboard's good to use. It's chiclet, but it does have this nice RGB underglow in case you're looking for that gamer aesthetic. In case you're not, you can turn it off, but it does work well. And then the touchpad has dedicated click buttons, which I'm always a huge fan of, and I think definitely deserve to be on a gaming laptop. The speakers. Also good. You've got two, two and a half speakers located on either side of the laptop. They produce very good sound all the way up to full volume. It's crystal clear. It is lacking a little bit in bass, but you tend to expect that at this price point. The webcam and mic, also serviceable. Take a look. The webcam and mic are good. The microphone is a little tinny, but can actually distinctly pick up your voice even in a room scenario. It does have a little bit of noise when you're typing on the keyboard, but for just regular video meetings, it will work. The only downside I can see with the camera is that it has a real hard time adjusting to any lighting changes. Eventually, this will normal out and I will not be horrifically overexposed. As you can see, the, the exposure is coming down a little bit, but it does take a little bit so make sure all of your changes are done before you're in your meeting because otherwise this laptop is going to create a rough time for <laughs> your visuals. And then Asus doesn't load this full of bloatware either like certain other laptop manufacturers. You do have your My Asus suite, which they try to get you into, as well as Microsoft 365. But other than that, it's a pretty stock Windows experience. Now, the biggest downside of this laptop is, I have to say, battery life. There are two different versions. There's one with the 48 watt hour battery, which is the one we have here, as well as one with a 90 watt hour battery. But the 48 watt hour battery just not great. In my battery life testing, we only got like three hours and six minutes, which is not a ton. It's about an hour less than the IdeaPad Gaming 3 with its Ryzen 5 processor. So you probably wanna stay a little bit closer to the wall with your 180 watt power connector. But this laptop doesn't stop at its spec sheet. If you look under the hood, you actually have some upgradeability. You have two RAM laptop spots, so you can upgrade the laptop to a higher RAM capacity if you want. This one's only using a single stick, so it's not in dual channel, but you could potentially upgrade that later on down the line if you wanna save some money right now, or you could pick up a $30 kit that's at Best Buy with a link in our video description. Additionally, it has a second NVMe slot in case you wanna add in more storage and don't wanna be limited by that 512 gig option. But compared to the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3, it's got double the storage capacity at the same price and also has a faster screen. It is a little lacking the GPU, but I will mention the benchmarks in a second and you'll find that that's actually not a problem. So now let's talk about where this bad boy shines, which is in the gaming department. Again, compared to the Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3, this thing walks all over it simply because of one reason. And that is by default, the laptop does not take up two gigabytes of RAM for the integrated GPU. The IdeaPad Gaming 3 has that issue, so at eight gigabytes, you are getting significantly worse experience because you're a RAM bottleneck. So a RAM upgrade is more necessary. However, even though this laptop has a slower GPU, it beat it out in all of the testing. In Modern Warfare 2, at 1080p medium, we averaged 72.9 FPS. CSGO, we managed 165 FPS. In Cyberpunk 2077, we hit 55.8 FPS. God of War, it was 55.1. Spider-Man was a little bit more tricksy and came in at 39.5. The Witcher 3 averaged 75.8, and Fortnite in 1080p performance mode hit 150 FPS, taking full advantage of the 144 hertz display that's on this laptop. Now, the only thing that this laptop does worse in is thermals, because the CPU definitely gets a lot hotter than the Ryzen 5 that's on the IdeaPad Gaming 3, because we averaged around 90 degrees Celsius on the CPU in all of our testing and the GPU was at 76 degrees. The fan noise honestly wasn't really a problem. It sounded just about as loud as the IdeaPad Gaming 3 and it can keep it relatively cool. You're not really going to burn yourself on it, but it doesn't really stay as calm and collected as the IdeaPad Gaming 3 did. So you can see in benchmarks, this 3050 beat a laptop with a 3050 Ti by 10 to 40 FPS because it's not RAM limited. Now there are ways to fix that on the IdeaPad Gaming 3, but just straight out of the box, this thing is going to be faster. 
I'm incredibly impressed with the Asus Tough Gaming F15. It provides nearly everything anybody could need in a budget gaming laptop. High refresh rate gaming, enough cores on the CPU to do any sort of professional application, upgradability on the RAM and the SSD, 144 hertz display. This is enough to get any gamer started and going in whatever they want to play. It honestly can handle AAA titles as well as eSport titles. And again, if you can find it at the price point that I did, it's going to be a spicy the onion for you. So we'll have links in the video description for you to check it out in case you want to watch the Idea Pad Gaming 3 review that we did recently. You can check out that video right up there. And until the next video, I'll see you, friends. Cheers.